Hello. I wanted to read to you the name jar. This is a story that we read in class this week, and I wanted to have it on video so that you could refer back to it while we're writing this as well. So the name jar, it's by Yan Suk Choi. It's published by Dragonfly. I don't own the rights to the book, obviously, but I wanted to read it for you so that you had it um, while you're doing your writing. Through the school bus window, Yoon Hai looked out the strange buildings and the houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day and she was both nervous and excited. So I want you to think about like your first day of school and how you felt when you, well, either when you logged onto the computer for the first time or even when you came into the building. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Yunhai's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name? Yunhai had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. It looks like that she had to get on an airplane to come to the United States. So I wonder how long her airplane trip was. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Yunhai, surprising her. Yunhai looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's, it's mine, Yunhai answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Yunhai, said Yunhai. Une, the girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, 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 une, some kids chanted. No, no, Yunhai corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Yoon hi. Oh, it's Yoon Hey, the boy said, like you. Hey. What about hey you? Just then the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Yoon Hai hurried to get off the bus. Hey you, bye-bye, the kids yelled as she left. Yoon Hai felt herself blush. I wonder why she wanted to get off the bus so quickly. I wonder, you know, when you're blushing, how does that make you feel? Hmm. Yoon Hai stood in the doorway of the new noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the school bus had gone to other rooms, but her face was still red. Aren't you going in? Asked a curly haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? He asked cheerfully. Yoon Hai nodded. And before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Kokutos, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokutos thanked him and greeted Yoon Hai. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Yoon Hai smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Yoon Hai pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokuto showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. Sometimes when people come from other countries to the United States, they change their name so that the people that are there are around a lot can easily pronounce their name. Sometimes they keep the same one, but sometimes they change it. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Yoon Hai kept thinking about her name. How was school, Yoon Hai? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Yoon Hai simply nodded. 
She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I wonder why her mom would ask if she understood the teacher. I wonder if they speak English in Korea or if they speak another language. I think they speak Korean. I can kind of tell that because over here in the corner, that looks like some symbols that would mean something, but I can't, I can't read that. I wonder what it says. I'm glad you are learning English well. Oh, there's the answer to my question. She's just now learning English, so they must be speaking Korean. Her mother said, you must study hard, but behave nicely and get good grades to show that you are a good Korean. I will, replied Yunhai, but, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Yunhai is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Yunhai complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Yunhai, her mother said. That's a good thing. Yunhai just wrinkled her nose. So she must not be agreeing with mom if she wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Yunhai and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fadil's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Ooh, I like that imagery there. I can imagine a loud truck going down the street picking up garbage. Nothing sounded or looked familiar, not until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was both in English and in Korean. I don't know if you can see that. That red's kind of hard to see on that blue. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, which is Korean style spicy pickled cabbage and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Yunhai's favorite for soup. It made Yunhai smile. Just because we moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Yunhai. Helping with the shopping, he asked. Yunhai nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Yunhai, she answered. Ah, oh, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Yunhai nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Yunhai. That evening, Yunhai stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Mm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Hey, my name is Susan. She said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. Now I can kind of imagine that too. I can imagine someone talking with their mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning when Yunhai arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Yunhai took one out and read it out loud. Daisy, that's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want said Cindy, who sat next to, next to her. Yunhai took out the rest of the paper. Tamala, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was a smart and brave character. Yunhai nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on a Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help, a smile spread over Yunhai's face. Ralph quickly said, we'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all and you'll have the longest name in history. 
I know to change my voice when I'm reading because it has the quotation marks. So if it's inside the quotation mark, I know that it's somebody reading or somebody else talking. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Yoon Hai looked out the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Yoon Hai turned and Yoon Hai turned around to see the curly haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said, and you, don't you have any name? Yoon Hai thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wood block on the ink pad and then stamped it on paper. This is my name, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature. When I open a bank account or when I write a letter and whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. You wanna try it? She offered the stamp to Joey and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Yun Hai said. And then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day the jar got fuller with more names and Yun Hai read them all. She found a few names she liked. Miranda, Stella, Avery. They all sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I put in three more, said Ralph. Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. Well, that's silly. What if she doesn't like the names she draws? <laughs> well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Hmm. Everyone thought about this. I wonder why people don't get to choose their own name. Do you guys know what your name means? Have you ever asked your parents why you got named that? It might be interesting for you to learn. When Yoon Hai got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. Now, up here at the top, you can see that it's written in Korean characters. Well, here's the problem. We can't read Korean, can we? Luckily, our author knew that, and down here at the bottom, it, it's in italics, so I know that this is what the letter said. I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. The, uh, blah, sorry. Here the moon is up, but there the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, and no matter how different America is, in, is from Korea, you'll always be my Yoon Hai, your grandma forever. Yoon Hai took out her wooden stamp and filled a paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Yoon Hai walked to Mr. Kim's store. I like how he told us that it wasn't a school day. They told us that it was a Saturday. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Yoon Hai. Hello, Mr. Kim, Yoon Hai replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Yoon Hee? He asked with, her, with his eyes open wide. Yoon Hai looked quickly at Mr. Kim and then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Yoon Hai. And it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Yoon Hai, Joey said slowly and this time perfectly. It made Yoon Hai smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. <gasps> Thank you, Mr. Kim. I'll see you Monday, Yoon Hai, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. Hmm. That's a good question. On Monday, Yoon Hai came to class early to look at the names one last time, but the jar wasn't on her desk. 
Instead, there was just a single piece of paper, paper with a name on it. Yoon Hai slipped it into her pocket. Where's your name jar? Asked Ralph as soon as, it, as he saw that it was gone. I don't know, Yoon Hai said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokoto's desk or on any other desk. And it wasn't on the counters or on any of the shelves. Uh-oh, looks like people are worried about it. As the other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon, Mr. Kokotos came in and Ralph shouted at him. The name jar is gone. The jar with all the names in it. Gone, Mr. Kokotos replied with a look of concern. He asked Yunhai, well, did you get a chance to read all the names? Yunhai nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Yunhai wrote her name in both English and Korean on the board. I like the beautiful names and funny names that you thought of for me, she told the class, but I realized that I like my name more, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Yunhai means grace. Grace, grace. Yunhai, Ralph shouted. Everyone tried to say it. Yunhai, 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 Yunhai said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon the kids began to say it better. Even Mr. Kokotos, they applaud Yunhai's choice. They applauded Yunhai's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Yunhai. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokotos reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Yunhai heard her new friend say goodbye. Bye, Yunhai. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Yunhai. Yunhai said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Yunhai, Yunhai, come downstairs, mother called up to Yunhai. Well, because mom's talking, I know that she's at home now. The setting has changed. Your friend is here. Yunhai rushed down to see who she met. <gasps> there stood Joey. And in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? Asked Yunhai breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Uh, well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name. And you did. He reached in and pulled out the other names. Do you want to keep them? He asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir, Yunhai said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. <laughs> you can keep it. I'll return the name jar to, to the class and maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. Yeah, I could do that, agreed Yunhai. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. <gasps> that must have been why he was at the store. Carefully, he pulled a small silver pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters, carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name, Chinku, read Yunhai. That means friend. And Chinku smiled back. Do you think that Joey was a good friend? Do you think that Yunhai changed as a person? At first, she seemed really nervous, and she didn't want to tell people her name after she told people on the bus. But then at the end, she did tell people. I wonder why she changed her mind. Just some questions for you to think about as you're listening or as you're thinking about what you've just listened to.